What's up, everybody? Brother Josh here, uh, Team Jesus Most Hope, Most Hope Deliverance Center. Just want to take a quick second out and ask if you know somebody struggling with something, uh, share this video with them. Uh, give them our uh, information, mosthopedeliverance.com. And uh, a lot of times in life, people are held back because of fear. And they get stuck in this cycle that's a continuing, uh, it's like a whirlwind, for a lack of a better word. It's just a whirlwind. And it's just, they think they get over it, and then they open the door back up to it. And because of fear of letting go and letting God, or they want to save face, or they want to be right, and something inside them swells up during the confrontation or the moment of fear or the time where they've got to step out and do something different, uh, and they revert. And what we need to do as believers is identify that emotion, and then we need to step back and say, this is negative. Wait a minute, this is negative. I feel like i got to be right. I feel like I need to justify what's going on. And we need to identify that emotion, and then we need to realize it's never the other person with the problem. It's us. We need to go repent. We need to go cry out to God. And we need to get delivered from whatever is holding us captive and causing us to revert, go backwards, and continue in that recycling process. That's a continual path of destruction. Now, every believer that goes through deliverance, they'll take a few steps forward. They might come back a little bit, take a few steps forward. Normal process. But if it's a, I heard this term, if it's a recycling over and over and over and over, you have to ask yourself, is this a test that I continually to fail? Because there is no easy passes here. And if you notice it being over and over and over, step back and examine yourself. And I've learned in life, hey, what am I really thinking about? What's going on before that emotion? Am I living out of my soul, my emotions? Is it, it is the driver's seat of my emotions, my soul, but is it driving me? Because I heard somebody say this, if you're easily offended, you're easily manipulated. I didn't say that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback on that because it's the truth. If you're easily offended, you're easily manipulated. So we as men and even women, we have to make sure, and especially men, we, we got to make sure that we don't take offenses. And the Bible says, hey, man, if your brother or sister offends you, forgive them. How many times? Seven times seven is 490 times. That's a lot of times in one day to forgive somebody. But God's mercies are new every day, so that's a daily thing. I have yet to meet somebody that upsets me 490 times in a day. And, uh, hey... Man, you know, I'm, I'm married, and I say that jokingly, uh, but in reality, it's a struggle sometimes. But in society, marriage is an ideal, and when it becomes an ordeal, people look for a new deal. We don't need to be looking for a new deal in our situations or circumstances. We need to look for a way out through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to look for something not that we're used to. We need to step out in faith and go against our logic. Pride says, oh, I got to be right. She just don't understand it. Pride says, I got to be right. He don't understand it. You don't know how you're hurting me. You don't know what you're doing. That's what pride says. I got to be right. No, you got to hear me. Demons are all about uh, justice. Oh, you got to get justice, man. Oh. But the Bible tells us that, hey, we overcome evil with love. So, hey, you sit there. All right. I got it. I got it. Okay. Can I get you something to drink? Okay. Somebody at work gets you upset. Okay. Well, hey, do, can I do anything for you? I get it. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, Brother Josh, I don't have to apologize. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, it also says that, you know, hey, if someone is offended by us, that we, even if they feel offended and we know we didn't do nothing wrong, we should still apologize, man. We got, we got to make this right. And that doesn't mean that you got to, everywhere you go, bite the bait and say, hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But you don't have to defend a lie. And 
give it to the Lord. Let him worry about it. Love looks past one's faults and provides for their needs. Jesus loved you so much that he continued to look past your faults when he was hitting that pipe, putting that needle in your arm, smacking your wife, committing adultery, cussing your mom out, stealing, robbing, thieving, gangbanging, whatever it was, back into the system, through the penitentiary again. He still continued to knock at your door, knock at your heart. So if he forgave us all that and he never, ever gave up on us, why are we so easily and so quick to revert and go back through a recycling process and not cast our cares on the Lord and know that he cares for us and that he will supply our every need according to his riches and glory. In other words, my brothers and sisters, I'm saying that, hey, man, we got to start being doers of the word and not just a hearer. We got to examine our lives and ask ourselves, what type of fruit are we producing? What type of fruit is being produced in, in my home, in my ministry, in my job, in my life as a whole, collectively, what type of fruit am I producing? Oh, well, I just got to tell them the truth. Okay. The only truth in this world is in the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. It's in the Bible. So if the words aren't coming out of your mouth, if they're not edifying, building up to the body of believers or encouraging someone who's lost, you're speaking, you may be speaking a fact, but the reality of it is, is that you may be speaking out of your soul. There could be an offense there that you took. And it may be just a breadcrumb of offense, but you could be harboring some sort of, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tell this person. Oh, they just don't get it. So when you start doing what the word says, everything inside you is gonna scream, no. Nope. Oh, you look soft. You're a coward. How could you? How could you let him do that to you? How could you let her say that to you? Oh, you look stupid. Oh, my gosh. And these are the thoughts the enemy's going to pump into your mind. Brother Mike says, I think it was Brother Mike or Kelly Beck, so there's two different types of attacks. The ones we resist and the devil will flee are the ones that are internal that we need to expel. So you need to examine yourself and ask yourself, what when you, when, when you feel you got to do something, are you resisting this attack and then identifying the internal issue and expelling it? As Derek Prince said, and they shall expel demons. So, my brothers and sisters, we need to repent. We need to cry out to God. We need to examine our own selves. We need to be an investigator. We need to stop focusing on everybody else's problems. And remove the beam out of your own eye. So that way you can see clearly to help someone else. And as you continue to grow in God's grace and knowledge and press towards this mark, understand the attacks will become uh, a little more aggressive. And the enemy will be creative once you, you get that other hook out of you. He'll shoot an arrow in a different way. So I just want to encourage you as we go into the new year to just do something different, man. Do what the Bible says. Stop living for this Jesus of the world and start living for this Jesus of the Bible. Stop living for the God of your own imagination and start living for the God of righteousness. Do what the Bible says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understandings in all your ways. All your ways. Acknowledge him. And he will direct your path and be not wise in your own eyes. In other words, don't, don't think you know it. Because I promise you, you don't. Make sure your actions and your thought line up with the word of God. If you're walking out what you profess is real in your heart, 
meaning your inner man, and you're walking in the Spirit, then your fruit and your witness will be your testimony, and your testimony will become your credential. So, again, I just encourage you this year to do something different. I want to thank you for your time. Like and share this video with someone. Visit our website, mosthopedeliverance.com. Step out in faith this year. Come visit us, mosthopedeliverance.com. Be set free from the bondages that's been holding you captive. Don't you think it's time you stop getting held back in life? It's time for you to use this as a setup instead of a setback. Use your setback as a setup to catapult you for success. I love you guys. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. Take care.